In this video, you will learn about a few different PowerPoint features. Let's get started. This specific slide focuses on one of the most basic features in PowerPoint. That is the option to select a layout for each slide. When you first insert a new slide, this screen will pop up. Notice the various layouts. Although there are numerous options, selecting the blank one gives you the most flexibility to move ahead and create your own slides. The next several slides will look at the shapes feature in PowerPoint. And although shapes are not the most vital feature in PowerPoint, they are often an overlooked feature in the program. So I wanted to take some time to review these features. To access the Shapes menu, go to the Insert menu seen across the screen. Then from the Insert menu, select Shapes. A pop-up window will appear on the right-hand side of your screen. The default option is All Shapes. You can use the up and down arrows to narrow your selection process. For the sake of demonstration, I will leave up all the shapes. You can use the scroll bar on the right to scroll down to see the various shapes that are available. In this case, I am going to simply select, as you will see in the next slide, the circle shape. Now that the circle shape has been chosen, it has been dragged and dropped onto the slide where we want it positioned. Once it is placed, the object can be clicked on and resized. It can be made smaller or larger, or the sizing handles can be dragged on just one side to stretch the shape, as is seen in this case in which the circle has been turned into an ellipsis. On the next slide, we'll review how to format this shape. In other words, how to change its color inside and to apply some other options. In order to work with the shapes that you have inserted, you need to go to the Format menu, one of the main menus in PowerPoint. Once you go to the Format menu seen at the top of the screen, a pop-up will appear. One of those pop-ups is Format Shape. Once you select Format Shape, the menu that you see on this screen will pop up. You will notice in the left-hand column there are various options. To demonstrate these options, I'm going to simply start with the Fill one. I've clicked on Fill, and a window has popped up on the right. I am now going to select the option No Fill, which means that the inside of the object will be left empty or without color, or will default to the background color of that particular slide. In this case, it will look white. On the next slide, we'll learn a little bit more about how to work with this particular shape further. Okay. Here we simply are seeing how to use the size option on the format shape menu. When you click, click on the size option, numerous options will appear across the screen. Take a minute to look at these options. I am going to select the option called Gradient, as you'll see on the next slide. To move ahead, these are action buttons. These action buttons are available in the Shapes menu in PowerPoint. As you scroll through using, for instance, All Shapes, you'll see the very bottom action buttons. Clicking on action buttons brings up a screen that allows you to select certain options. For the sake of simplicity, I have simply now inserted all the action buttons on this screen. 
So we have the home action button, the question mark, which can be used to answer a question, the next button, the previous action button, the last slide action button, the first slide option button, and the go to. Once any one of these action buttons are placed on a PowerPoint slide and clicked on, a menu pick will pop up. Ordinarily, the default on that menu is selected. So, for instance, if you were to click on the home button, you would go back to the very first slide. What I suggest you're doing is going into PowerPoint and playing with these action buttons to get the feel of how they work. On this final slide, I just emphasize that if you'd like to add transitions between slides, the best way to do it is through the slide sorter view. The slide sorter view will bring up all your slides as you see displayed at the bottom of this screen. What you merely need to do then is click on a particular slide. Then, using the transitions menu, look for the specific transition you would like to insert on that slide. Notice there are more options available than are immediately shown on the screen. You are encouraged to pick simple transitions and ordinarily to use the same transition throughout the slideshow for the sake of consistency. However, there may be times when you want to insert a particular transition on an individual slide. And in the slide sort of view, you can select that particular slide and insert the desired transition. Another point to note is that transitions should not be added to your slides until the whole entire slide presentation has been created. Thank you for listening. This is my first screencast and I'm just trying out the program.